In this lesson, we'll learn how we can use vector curves to influence our raster paint strokes using guide curves. All right, great. So this is the same file we started the previous lesson with, but we're going to use it a little bit differently. Now, I've actually created a couple of more layers in this one. I've got one new vector layer and one new raster layer or paint layer here, and we're going to utilize these moving forward. Now, um, the beautiful thing about Sketchbook Designer is that utilizing pixels and vectors together is encouraged. So I'm going to show you sort of one way that we can do just that. So uh, let's come over here to this guide curves layer. And what I'd like to do is come over here and for these plastic pieces right here, or these things that wrap around our shoe, I'd like to create kind of an inset concave area that sort of mimics the line of this. So uh, now to do this, we can use a couple of different tools. Now we've already learned how we can use our basic brushes up here to draw vector paths. So um, if I come over here and draw a path, this particular path, or this particular curve, has a pin stroke applied to it by default. But we can always change that in this drop down to a guide curve. Now a guide curve is exactly what we're going for here. Now notice if I do that, and then we come over and kind of deselect that curve, it actually is highlighted in this cyan blue. There's no stroke applied to it. It's not really visible other than the fact that it's this blue color. That's exactly the kind of curve that we want to create, but we don't have to just use a brush to do that. There's actually a special tool just for creating those guide curves. It's called the Guide Curve Brush. It's right over here. So uh, let's go ahead and use this one. I'm going to actually switch to curve point mode here, and I'm just going to kind of zoom in on our shoe. And I'll just start drawing right down here on my guide curves layer. Put in my first control point there, put in another one here, and I'm just going to start kind of going up, mimicking this line. I'll come in and actually kind of adjust this as I go. I'm just going to kind of come in here and draw each one of these curves that we're going to need. All right, great. So I've got the first curve drawn here. We'll go ahead and hit the check mark to hit OK. Now, if I want to draw another curve, maybe for this particular edge, I can mouse over there and go ahead and click where that red dot is, and I can start my curve right on top of the other curve. So it's now going to be a fillable shape if that's what we wanted to do with it. So we'll go ahead and just kind of modify that. You'll notice how I added an additional control point there. Go ahead and click once right down here. Maybe add another one in the center. Just kind of continue along. Now I'm not going to go all the way around this shape, but uh, let's go ahead and start another one right here. Just kind of bring it down the opposite side here. Hold down my space bar to pan around a little bit. Trying to make sure all of these control points are an equal distance away from uh, the path that we're kind of mirroring here, or rather the curve. And we can continue on. Um, it's really up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of complete this by coming over to here and then coming over to here. All right, great. So that's looking really pretty nice. I may come in and just uh, just the position of that. You can see it's got some snapping. It's trying to snap to that other path. We'll just come in here and adjust those. There we go. That looks good. All right, great. So we've got our guide curves drawn. Now we can utilize these guide curves by simply switching over to a paint layer. And I've got one right here. We'll just come over and select that shadow layer. And let, I tell you what, let's go ahead and grab maybe an airbrush. And you can see it's right here. Now the airbrush can be utilized in three different modes. You can see the first one here is hard. And then we have sort of a soft. And then we have this one, which sort of one edge is masked. So um, if we come and utilize this one and adjust the size, and the intensity, you can kind of see we have a hard edge on one side, 
Let me just turn it all the way up. Hard edge on one side, soft edge on the other. Now this is going to be great for the type of shadow that I want to use. So I obviously don't want the intensity to be that intense. Um, let's come up here though in our toolbar and we're going to actually focus on these snapping options here. Now the first one is no snap. That means that we're going to be completely ignoring any kind of guide curves we have. And when we paint, you can see that there are no, there's absolutely no influence of our guide curves on the stroke that we paint. Now this next one is going to be to snap the brush center to the curve. So with this one, you'll notice here that as soon as I get near that guide curve, my brush snaps to it and I get this little green dot. Now at this point I could come in and begin to just sort of paint. I'm going to start down here in this corner and just sort of paint a nice clean curve right along that line. Just like so. Now you do want to pay attention. I'm going to undo because I took it from left to right. If I take this from right to left it's going to want to apply that stroke to the other side of the path. So you can see we're really not able to see it. So I'm going to undo again and we're just going to come in here and take that stroke right up our guide path, just like so. Now obviously we've got a little bit outside here. We would need to come in with our eraser and maybe sort of clean that up. Let me just come in and shrink my eraser down by holding down the B key on my keyboard. Maybe come in here and just sort of clean that edge up if we needed to. Now that's a pretty dark shadow. We may not want to go quite that dark. So we can always turn that intensity down. Now again, we're using the option to snap the brush center to the curve. Now we can also choose the option to snap the brush edge to the curve as well. And that's this particular button right here. And so you'll notice here that that little green dot sort of floats. Let me just shrink my brush tip down so we can get a little better idea of what it's trying to do here. So in this case, you can see here, I'm going to paint the other direction. It's trying to snap the center, or rather the edge of my brush stroke to that particular guide curve. Now it may not be the best example with that particular airbrush, but if I came in with this one, it would be a lot more apparent. So you can see here how that works. So in this case, for the effect that we're going for, it's clear to me that the snap brush center to curve is the better option especially if I want to utilize this particular airbrush here. Just drop that intensity down a bit. Come in and do my shadow. And I'm actually going to come in and erase away here. We can use the eraser in the exact same way. So you can see here how that eraser is adhering, and that's again because we have that snap center to curve turned on. So I'm actually going to turn it off for a moment so I can maybe erase this away. I got a little bit dark with that shadow. I want this to be a little bit more on the subtle side. Switch back to my airbrush here. You can see here how when I came back the opposite direction from right to left, it started applying my stroke to the other side of the guide path, and that's that's really not what I'm looking for. So just come in here and run one more pass. Well, I think one's enough. And now when we come in and hide that guide curves layer, you can kind of see what the outcome of this particular example is. Now obviously we probably should darken that shadow up a little bit more in the corners depending on how um, how much of a corner we actually want to have there. So uh, in that case we could always again shrink our airbrush down, maybe go a little more intense, and maybe just run that right along there. Run one right along here. Just like so. And now when we hide our guide curves, we now have what looks to be a nice little recessed area into this plastic piece that wraps around our shoe. So uh, in this lesson, we've learned how we can begin to combine vectors with our pixel-based artwork utilizing guide curves. All right, great. So um, let's go ahead and move on at this point. There are some really cool tools for building your own custom brushes here inside a sketchbook designer. We'll take a look at that in the next lesson.